at the State of the Union, President Biden spoke about his vision for Middle East peace. I'm directing the U.S. military to lead an emergency mission to establish a temporary pier in the Mediterranean on the coast of Gaza that can receive large shipments carrying food, water, medicine, and temporary shelters. No U.S. boots will be on the ground. A temporary pier will enable a massive increase in the amount of humanitarian assistance getting into Gaza every day. So uh, a massive increase of, of assistance, of aid, uh, ostensibly to civilians. But in fact, we know that the people receiving this aid are Hamas and their fighters and troops. And they will control the food and the medicine. And they will be able to last lo longer in those tunnels. And they'll be strong to fight the Israelis uh, and uh, continue their jihad. So basically, uh, providing all this food is doing the exact opposite of ending this war early. If you wanted to end this war, then starve out those fighters. Make sure that they don't have fuel and electricity and food. And if you did that, they're going to come out of their tunnels. They're going to fight face to face or maybe just give up. They'll bring out the hostages. But no, President Biden here is ensuring that the war will go on for a long time. Moreover, there's another thing this pier could be used for, and that's to help refugees leave the Gaza Strip. And the world helped refugees leave in other uh, conflict areas like Sudan, Yemen, Syria, Afghanistan, and of course the Ukraine. Millions of people left those places and found homes somewhere else, found shelter somewhere else. But for some reason, no uh, refugees are allowed to leave the Gaza Strip because some folks want to continue this war on forever and also want to blacken Israel's image by saying, look, you kill people, civilians and children, but really it's because they are putting them in harm's way, putting them in harm's way, continuing the war ad nauseum instead of ending it early. And Israel must do its part. Israel must allow more aid in the Gaza to ensure humanitarian workers aren't caught in the crossfire. Humanitarian workers caught in a crossfire? What are humanitarian workers doing in a crossfire between terrorists and the, the IDF, the Israeli army? What are they doing in that crossfire? What, what, are they, what are they hanging out there? I mean, most of the civilians have cleared out. Why are there aid workers there? Maybe they're not exactly aid workers. Maybe they're like UNRWA, international organizations dedicated to help the jihad and the cause of fighting against Israel, who are just donning the clothing of of aid workers, but are in fact aiders and abettors of terrorism. So I don't think Israel's got to do more to make sure those guys don't get hurt. We probably have to identify them as part of the terrorist enterprise that's trying to destroy Israel. They're announcing they're going to they're going to call, have a crossing in northern Gaza. To the leadership of Israel, I say this: humanitarian assistance cannot be a secondary consideration or a bargaining chip. Protecting and saving innocent lives has to be a priority as we look to the future. Why isn't getting the civilians out a priority? Why can't we prioritize making sure those civilians leave? Many of them have stated out loud. Uh, they have, even have uh, campaigns asking for money uh, to leave, to make a better life somewhere else. Why isn't moving them out of the way so that Hamas can be destroyed, so that jihadists and terrorists, today's neo-Nazis, could be destroyed? Why isn't that the priority? Why is keeping people in their homes... Uh, and having them being used uh, as human shields. Why is that a priority? It may, does not make sense to me. It may, that sounds like a way to continue that war forever instead of actually creating a situation where the war is finished through Israeli victory. The only real solution to the situation is a two-state solution over time. <clears throat> I don't understand why everybody's getting up and clapping. For what? Wait a minute, wait a minute. How did this thing even start, the, the October 7th massacre? How did that start? Oh, yeah, Israel gave up land to the PLO slash PA, the Palestine Liberation Organization, the, the Palestinian Authority, and they were changed over, they were taken over by Hamas. And so basically we handed over a chunk of land, the Gaza Strip, to Hamas's hands. And then they prepared that whole area as a forward front of the jihad to make war on Israel. So how does a two-state solution going to bring peace? I don't even understand this. We just had a war from the area that we gave away, that we surrendered to the terrorists. Now President Biden saying, I know, I know, give more land to the terrorists. That is what's going to bring peace. And people are standing up and applauding that. It, everybody should be like, I don't think that's going to work. I think giving away land to the jihad is not a good idea. It did not work in the past. It won't work in the future. 
Why is everybody standing up for this? Is this like the mantra that everybody has to buy these days? I mean, how many more things could you have in this world that you fail over and over and over again? The two-state solution is an endless failure, and yet these people are getting up and clapping. Have they? Uh, is there? Is this a failure of imagination? And I say this as a lifelong supporter of Israel, my entire career. No one has a stronger record with Israel than I do. I challenge any of you here. I'm the only American president to visit Israel in wartime. But there is no other path that guarantees Israel's security and democracy. There is no other path that guarantees that Palestinians can live in peace with, with peace and dignity. And there's no other path that guarantees peace between Israel and all of its neighbors, including Saudi Arabia, with whom I've so how exactly is it going to bring peace to cut up our tiny little land and have it uh, taken over, the, the, the highland of it being taken over by the Palestinian Authority, who's going to become the jihad in a second? How, how is that going to bring peace? How is this uh, a consistent failure going to somehow work out? It's not. It's not. And with regarding to those credentials, listen, anybody who's pushing Israel to give up its land is not working towards peace. It's really that simple. And as I said in, in another uh, one of the videos here, it's really very simple. Let's use uh, a, a different parable. Let's use the parable of Taiwan. Imagine if somebody said to Taiwan, which is a tiny little island right outside of China, right? And, and China wants to swallow up Taiwan. And so the, the solution that we offer up to Taiwan is you want peace with China? Let's cut up half of Taiwan, this tiny little island, give half to China. Give half to China, and that will bring peace. Well, anybody that has uh, two eyes in their head will start to laugh at that because it's absurd. We understand that China wants to swallow up the whole thing. The jihad wants to swallow up all of Israel. Giving half of it to the Palestinians is not going to bring any peace. It's going to bring more jihadism, more terrorism, more endless war. So let's snap out of this uh, bad cycle of thinking where we think that by empowering jihadists, we're going to have some kind of peace. We're not. Here's a simple and good idea, a strong Israel on its land, a strong Israel in its borders. And then once it's strong and people respect it and understand that they can't mess with it, then after that, we can have peace with the uh, region, with those countries that want to respect the fact that we are a tribal people on our land, just like their tribal peoples on their land. That's what the Abraham Accords is. And that's what uh, President Biden should be suing for. Sadly, uh, he is suing for uh, policy that's going to lead to endless war. We simply can't accept it.